Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So we are now less than a week to the launch of the Spectrum from Retro Games. Uh, and on that, they have actually released some documents, some guides, um, and some information regarding, obviously, the USB stick that will be added to the Spectrum if you want to add your own games. So we're going to cover that in this video in preparation for the Spectrum launching next week. Let's get started with the video. So the Spectrum will launch 22nd of November 2024 uh, and obviously to coincide with that they've unleashed some support, some manuals, some details about the games, obviously there's some uh, information about the games, how to play them um, in the controls, so that's going to be quite helpful. So maybe in preparation for the Spectrum launch it would be a good idea to have a look at some of this, get prepared, obviously you'll probably have to prepare, get yourself a USB stick if you plan to add more games as well, so we'll cover some of that in the video here. So on the actual Spectrum support page, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to actually go through that, you've got the Spectrum user manual, the Spectrum frequently asked questions using a pre-prepared USB stick image and custom controller configurations. So let's have a quick look at the manuals to start. So let's have a quick browse through the manual. There's 66 pages here, um, which is quite a lot. Obviously, some information about the actual console, how to use it. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, most people, you probably want to have a browse through this before you actually get started because there'll be some hints and tips uh, and to get the best out of the, the sort of console. Now, if you've actually purchased any of these minis before, I say mini, this is more like a, a replica size, but previous stuff like the C64 mini, the A500, they were all sort of mini consoles. They all have similar interfaces. So I guess if you've bought one of those devices, you'll probably be familiar with how to set these up and what settings to actually use. And the game's carousel will probably look very similar. How to save your game will be pretty similar as well. Um, hopefully we've got some nice carousel music as well. You can see here I like the, the sort of tape that they've used there for saving the games too. That's pretty cool. Now interestingly I don't think this uh, comes complete with a joypad so uh, I guess if you want to play with a joypad or a joystick you may want to think ahead and purchase one otherwise you're most likely going to be using the keyboard to play the games now i know a lot of the spectrum games were heavily utilized with a keyboard and a lot of gamers probably played uh, games on a keyboard but i guess for uh, for me these days it's more comfortable playing on a, a d-pad or on a joypad or some sort but it is what it is um, everyone will have their own favorite way of playing these games you see there's different options there for the, the different sort of screen size um, for the spectrum and there's obviously a section there about enables the ULA Plus, um, which increases the number of colours the Spectrum is able to display. A bit interesting to see how that actually works uh, in practice. That will be interesting. I'm looking forward to testing that. Got different uh, frame options that you can use there as well. You can obviously just leave it black or you can add some borders if you would prefer. Sometimes I find the borders to be a little bit distracting. And there's different uh, language options there. Some of the language options don't change a few of the games there that's listed. Um, some advanced options. Now this is probably where it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, there's obviously you can access the basic mode, the boot mode, um, which is pretty cool. You can obviously launch it as it would a classic uh, 48k Spectrum. Now this section is looking at the loading your own programs. Now we'll look at the what they've done separately as well. Now as usual, get yourself a reasonably decent uh, USB stick. Um, most of them you can get a reasonably cheap one from Amazon that won't break the bank. They don't have to be huge memory wise because Spectrum games memory are very very small. So you could get a really tiny um, USB stick and you'll still be able to add thousands of games to it. Um, now they have to be formatted using the FAT32 file system. Now interestingly here, obviously if you are downloading your own games, these are the type of files that will be uh, usable on that. Now it's generally the most common stuff I guess, like the tap tzx.p zx or dot rom if it was a cartridge I guess. But anyway, that is the file types. If you try to use any other file types then it's possible they may not work. So be wary of that and obviously there's information there about making playlists as well which is probably similar to uh, what it was like on the the a500 so we'll try and cover as much of that so this is a little section here that's um i'm pretty sure we'll have to use adjusting the settings of the program you can obviously choose the model from 48k 128k and um, 
plus 2A universal. Um, and you've got your border size, you've got the loading speed. Um, I guess you want to have the, the normal experience or you can obviously fasten that up. You've got enable extended colours, which we obviously already talked about. The joystick type, you can obviously choose which joystick type to default to. Um, you can also map the controls as well on your controller. There's a lot of information there. I think it's going to be difficult to go over too much of this uh, at the present until we actually get our Spectrum and test these things. Um, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the things will be covered in multiple videos at that time because I think it's going to be hard to cover everything uh, in one review video. It's probably going to take far too long. But anyway, there's obviously information that you want to use. Uh, the gamepad that comes, you can actually buy a specific gamepad that looks like the same colours as the Spectrum, but you can easily use, if you have the A500 or some of the other um, sort of minis then I'm pretty sure you can use any of them, you can even use the joystick uh, that was obviously meant for the C64, I'm pretty sure that will be fine as well. Cassette tape navigation, so interesting information there, you can obviously fast forward rewind I guess with that function which is kind of interesting that'll be um, strange I'm sure to try there's also a section about updating the firmware now this is something that um, retro games are really good at they do support the spectrum and if there's anything needing updated through through time they will release firmware updates um, now the last um, mini they've done the, the Atari one I think there's only really been one firmware update, so there's not been a lot of changes to that. If you go back to maybe the C64 Mini and the A500, there was a lot of things that changed from the very beginning, and there was multiple updates. Um, but I'm pretty sure now that the, they've got a lot more experience of these systems, a lot of the, impl the stuff they implemented onto these will probably carry forth onto the Spectrum, meaning I doubt we'll get that many um, firmware updates over the, the next uh, months or years um, using this. Unless there is something completely wrong that doesn't work. Um, but they, they might actually add some more games to the carousel. They've been known to do that as well uh, from time to time. There's a section here on using your own peripherals, like using your own controllers. Hopefully that will uh, be absolutely fine. But anyway guys, that is the manual. I would probably recommend downloading that at your leisure. You can obviously do it on your phone as well. And probably having a read through and get yourself prepared for uh, the Spectrum when it uh, launches next week. So let's look at the Spectrum frequently asked questions. This probably seems a bit daft at this particular moment. You will probably refer to this um, once you've actually got your Spectrum. Um, and some of the questions that might be asked. They're obviously trying to preempt what things might be asked. How do I resolve the lag experience on my TV? Um, how to get the spectrum to work with my monitor? Some interesting stuff there. I'm pretty sure this will be added to um, through time once they actually get more questions from the public. But I guess those are the, the, the main things that they think will be asked <laughs> when the uh, spectrum does get launched. So there's also the section here about the pre-prepared USB stick image. Okay guys, I'd probably recommend to maybe even get started doing this now before you actually get the Spectrum. Get yourself your USB stick um, and then use uh, obviously this process and try and get your um, USB set up to good to go when the Spectrum actually launches. Now it says you recommend using a USB stick that is less than 32 gig in size as only a maximum of 32 gig can be used. Now I've actually only got a 32 gig spare line about the house um, but you really don't need anything that large. I think the size of the Spectrum files are really small so even something as small as a 4 gig should be absolutely fine. Um, probably even smaller than that if that's what's lying about. But anyway, this is the process. Make sure your USB stick is formatted to FAT32. That's probably the first thing you should do. I'll show you how to do that. Um, also, download one of the disk images below, which is obviously choose one of these. Now, you're supposed to choose one that's smaller than the size of your USB stick. So in my instance, I'll probably choose 16, 8 or 4. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably just choose the 16 uh, gig image. Um, then you've obviously unzipped that to give you the .img file, install the flash tool Belena Etcher uh, and then you'll follow that process and use the, the flash tool to write the, the image onto your USB stick. Sounds simple enough but sometimes that can be more complicated than it needs to be and not everyone's an expert in PCs out there so uh, I'll try and follow through that process now. So put your USB stick into the PC. What to do is right click on the USB drive down below and then choose format and then make sure it's uh, like this. The file system is FAT32 default 
and allocation unit size 16 gig which is fine so then just make sure this is quick format then just click start choose ok and that's pretty much it it should sort that out in a few seconds and that's it format complete so your usb stick is now good to go you can close that um, file there so what to do now is download the appropriate stick image in this instance i'm going to use the 16 gig image and that should download to your pc um, it's warning here about viruses i'm pretty sure it should be fine so let's download anyway okay once it downloads to your pc it will most likely go to your downloads but i've obviously created a separate folder here um, it will take a good few minutes to actually download and once you've done that just right click on it and then extract all um, to the same sort of folder here and you can obviously leave it in a separate folder if you like but just extract it um, and this will extract all the, the details in that into a separate folder. That's basically going to be your disk image um, that will be flashed using the Belena Etcher tool that will download in a little minute. I've already actually downloaded it as you can see uh, in the folder but you can see it will take a few minutes to actually um, unleash from the, the zip file so just have to bear with it. Okay once that's actually downloaded or extracted sorry you can get rid of the actual um, uh, zip file you can just delete that it's you won't need that anymore and um, so obviously once you go into the actual folder it's basically just got a .img file that you'll use to flash onto the usb stick once you've done that go back to the um retro games website and you can download the other files that we need so the other uh, tool that we need is the uh, balena etcher um sort of flash tool so click on that balena etcher and then choose so you can download uh, and it'll give you the options of which one to actually uh, download now there's options for mac there's options for windows and linux so choose the one uh, obviously that's relative to whichever pc or laptop you are actually using i guess most people will be either between windows or mac and uh, so for me i was uh, downloading the windows one and that then downloads the execute file uh, to get the uh, tool started so that you can flash the image onto your USB stick. Okay, so once it's um, obviously you've run through the, the setup, just uh, double click here, and this should then open up the Belena Etcher um, sort of tool to use to flash the image. It may take a few moments to actually open up, so just sort of bear with it. Obviously, make sure your USB stick is still on the uh, in the PC, and then also just flash from file and then just find where you've saved that file i'm not sure what the heck this is but anyway just find where you've saved the .img file so this is the file that i've found just choose that click open and then you need to select the target which is basically just select your usb stick it should automatically clock uh, appear tick it select one and then choose flash so just choose yes when it comes up do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device choose yes and then it should hopefully run through that actual process now this might take um, a good few minutes to process okay guys so once it's completed it should look a bit like that now for me that took about half an hour i'm not sure that will be the same for everyone I'm not sure if my PC was running slower, that is just normal, but it did take at least 30 minutes to run through that process. So this would be a good idea to set up now before you actually get the Spectrum um, and then you're prepared for the launch day. Okay, so once you've actually um, got your USB stick sorted, obviously I had to remove it there and add it back in. Um, you should basically just be able to add ROMs to the USB stick as it is. It's self-titled Retro Games. Um, itself so you don't really need to add any folders or change anything uh, that's it basically i would just drop your roms in this folder right here and it should then pick up on the spectrum obviously i won't know that till um, the spectrum actually launches but i'm pretty sure that's all you have to do at this point here okay so once you've got some of your games onto your usb stick you are pretty much good to go now you can sort this however you please into different folders it probably doesn't really matter now we'll cover this a little bit more when we actually get the spectrum but that should be you good to go with your own usb stick and your own added games okay so that is the the usb stick ready to go there's also a section here about custom controller configurations and um, that you may want to browse through i'm not entirely sure about this we'll probably have to wait till we get the 
the spectrum uh, before we get into details. This bit does get a little bit complicated. Um, so yeah, we'll wait till we get the spectrum before we look at this in more details. So there's also a section on all the games installed on the spectrum. If you want to check this, it basically lists all the games that are pre-installed onto the spectrum and it'll give you details how to play uh, each of the games and what the controls are because I, I doubt very much that the spectrum will come complete with any sort of manual to help you get started and um, so it'll be interesting to see that we we'll maybe just choose the first one for example and it tells you basically how to start the game now to play this game using the controller select Kempston when prompted and, and there's all the, the sort of controls on the left hand side of the screen um, which I guess most games will probably utilise those buttons um, if you're obviously quite happy playing games with the keyboard and um, we'll obviously try it with the keyboard and we'll try it with a controller as well and hopefully I'll try and find the old C64 joystick and, and use that not sure that's the best but we'll give it a bash nonetheless and obviously it gives a little bit of details about the game uh, and how to play it, the story and that sort of thing. So that's obviously very helpful. As I said, I doubt very much you'll get this included with the Spectrum. If you want to know how to play the games, you're probably going to have to refer to um, this site here and I'll leave a link in the description. So obviously some of the games are a little bit more complicated to play like Lords of Midnight. Um, so maybe a good idea to look through some of the details here uh, and maybe get you prepared on how to actually play these games. Some of these games are pretty in-depth. Um, which may surprise a lot of people because um, they are only like Spectrum games, I guess you say only Spectrum games, I say with inverted commas, but a lot of these games are incredibly in-depth um, and this one, The Hobbit, can only be used by playing a keyboard um, which is absolutely fine. It, obviously you're going to be using a lot of sort of typing and text and type of thing, but there's a lot of information here that um, will be massively helpful um, for you to get the most out of some of these games, no doubt about it. Okay guys, that's our look at the Spectrum, just getting prepared for when it launches next week. Obviously lots of information about the manual, the games and how to actually set up your USB stick for your own added games. Definitely a good idea to get prepared because once you get it you probably just want to get stuck in and play those classics uh, and enjoy it. Um, anyway guys, thanks very much for watching our video, we'll catch you again in the next one.